right, this is John Chen, one of your co-hosts for The Engagement Show. And of course, I'm here with my good friend, Roger Haskett. Roger, what is happening with you today? Well, I don't know. Today's a pretty good day. But what happened last week is that I went to the Engaging Conference ooh, by this guy named John Chen. I think we're going to talk about that. Um, yeah. Excellent. If you are watching this on any of our live streams, make sure and hit the subscribe, share, like, and do some commenting. We are looking, we are looking for you. So yeah, we have the engaging conference. So excited to, to let people know that, uh, that we completed, this is the fourth conference. Uh, it's amazing how fast this time has gone. Things are happening and that we achieved some really astounding things that happen here so let's see let's just take a peek here uh it was called the engaging conference the secrets of planning engagement uh it happened from october 23rd through the 25th and i'm already put up registration roger for the the second uh, the second the next conference next year and by the way roger i have decided that this next conference is going to be hybrid so you need to think about if you're going to get your Canadian body into the United States territory. But before we do that, we're gonna I'm gonna highlight three moments inside of here. Roger's also got some other things that, that we'd like to share. So uh, these are three things that really happened that were engaging during the conference that were unexpected. And the first one, I'm gonna give a shout out to our good friend, Phil Mershon, who wrote a book called Unforgettable, right? Creating Unforgettable Experiences. And here, <laughs> Roger is, uh, he led the teams to create uh, like a closing jingle or a closing song. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share, I could have never wrote this, right? Uh, I, <laughs> I could have never architected this into a meeting. But let me share a little video about what the, the one of the teams did. So here we go. On the fifth um, conference, Phil brought to me. me. Making it momentous, but working and working lunch, backward design. Everyone, and good night. That's oh, awesome. My goodness. All right. Very that nice. was amazing. Yeah, there's Talk nothing you think. John. Talk about engagement. You know, there's nothing you think would be worse and and not engaging, such as trying to sing on the same time in virtual. But totally. this actually turned out to be one of the most memorable moments. So they did the five days of Christmas, except it was the five hours of engagement. And mm -hmm. so that's where the song, I don't even know what the lyrics are still, although I think she, she did send them to me. Uh, and, but, but it, it doesn't so, matter. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter. matter. Like, it doesn't matter because we just saw a group of people fully engaged in something that they knew what was going on. Even if we don't, we still see the engagement. It leaks through, it splashes through everywhere. And the key here too is that uh, yeah everybody else was engaged because they were laughing because basically right it doesn't work and it's actually the fact that it doesn't work is what makes it work and so every single person was engaged with this and uh this is what's great when you the instructor give control to the audience and then you get something unexpected back that's better than like the what unquote the you know the normal assignment that you assign them to do and anyways, everyone was laughing at this moment. It was a great piece of energy and levity. And there actually was value inside of there because they actually uh, did something for the five speakers that were on that day. So. Well, and not just that. I mean, there's so much value everywhere in it because all of those faces are communicating how present they are. And not just present, they are like happily, joyfully present. Yeah, um, like watching you in the corner laughing, you're like laughing, your body is shaking, you're laughing so hard. These are yeah, these are moments that you definitely want. And so when I was teaching actors, um, one of my Rogers rules was mistakes can be golden, because what would happen in, in an audition is someone would make a mistake and they'd stop like I'd be teaching the class and they'd stop. And I'd be like, what are you doing? And they'd be like, oh, I made a mistake. And I'd be like, oh, my God, the one thing that is real in a mistake is that there's truth everywhere. Everywhere is truth in a mistake. And that is golden, like the power of that. And to see what could be seen by other people as a mistake 
go through the process and come out at the other side like a brick of gold. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think the other piece that's really important there too, Roger, is that it proves that it's live. Right. This is not some pre recorded keynote from somebody who got everything right. I think that mistakes quite often signal that this is live, and quite often the authenticity of the mis mistake adds okay. value to the live program so that people really understand this is like happening now. This is not some manufactured movie that, that everything is perfect. So, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Well, you can't see it, it's over top of my logo. I see it. Uh, 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 <laughs> But uh, I totally agree. One hundred percent. And um, the the power of doing something virtual live, yeah. I've always believed in. Like I've always like when people say you can record it, the keynote, and we'll do it. I'm always like, why? Like, can I be live so I can respond to what's happening yeah. uh, in the space? Like, I can respond to questions. I can respond to faces. And and it's so interesting the difference because so many people are like, well, no, it's safer when it's recorded. And I'm like, safer, but are we here for safety or are we here for actually engagement? Because engagement can be messy, but it's worth, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Safety may not be engagement. In fact, safety, I think uh, we're so used to like finely tuned commercials that we, we tune those out. But when somebody makes a mistake, that's actually what happened here too. People were turning cameras on or people were coming back if they were tuned out going, what's happening on my screen? I got to see this, right? Yeah. I, you know, the other side of it too, Roger, is this. Everybody loves a train wreck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you can't not watch it. Yeah, you can't not, 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 not watch it. And so, okay. So speaking of other things not to watch, here comes the second example. Uh, so here comes the second example I have for you today. Uh, right here. Okay, good. So what happened in this scenario is this, is that our good friend here, um, uh, Shiraz Babu is an amazing speaker. And I do, I do believe Roger got to see a, a little bit yeah, of it. I did. But, but, but Shiraz does this whole thing where he really works with people in a short amount of time. And he gets them to talk about sometimes really deep psychological things extremely deep things yeah yeah like these are really like things that are blocking people from their success which is usually yourself so the the reason why i gotta explain this photo though is so key this is the power of a virtual meeting roger okay my good friend mel is in a cruise ship she is in a cruise ship in the Caribbean and she bought the Wi-Fi package. So her signal is coming out of the cruise ship into a satellite and back to our meeting. Okay, so now the second part is, is that she's in her bathtub. <laughs> right? <laughs> Cause that was like the best place of where the signal was. She actually tried to move outside and the signal was worse because the Wi-Fi point is meant for inside the room and not for the deck. So she found that the best place she could stay connected with us was was in a bathtub. And then <laughs> I know the, here's the, and then the third thing is that Shiraz worked with her and just really like this really personal block that she was having. And she volunteered, by the way. Nobody was forced to get on stage with Shiraz. Every single person said, I want to talk to you. And and all, every single person that talked to Shiraz like had their own version of breakthrough, and so this. And, okay, so and not just that, just not just that. There were like one or two people that volunteered at the beginning, but the moment Shiraz started, the volunteers filled up. Like I That's watched right. them go, and everyone all of a sudden put up their hand to be like, "I want to be part of this," even though it was diving into people's psyche. Well, not even though, because it was diving into people's psyche and they were, we were seeing people make breakthroughs. Yes. Yeah. Get emotional, make breakthroughs. Here's the, the key piece here too, is that even if you didn't raise your hand, every, at least camera that was on that I could see, right, was enraptured. This is a great piece. This is why I brought Shiraz, is yeah. that the engagement of watching somebody else change is engaging. And then the second part that Shiraz knows, I got to talk to him afterwards, and he just says, quite often, it's the person who never volunteers themselves who really changes and never yeah. says anything because yeah. they're listening to this conversation. So I can tell you many people uh, engage in this part, even if they were listening, even if they had cameras off, they had their mic off, when even by listening to this conversation, often some of them reported back and said, I made a change too, I just didn't tell you.
Well, wow. it's yeah, a hundred percent because you know what you're doing with that is you know you capture the people who don't mind being the center of attention, but there's all this massive group of people who really don't like being the center of attention, especially if it's involved diving into themselves. But yeah. those people have things to learn as well. And so the yeah. ability to see what Shiraz was doing and to apply it to your own life was quite, um, it was quite, um, it was fascinating. It was quite, quite um, uh, inspiring. The key here too, Roger, right? For everyone who's creating conferences, summit masterclasses, you got to pick the right speakers. Mm. You got to pick, you got to pick the right people, you know, MC, speakers, yeah. staff, right? there's all these different roles. And this is like proof in the pudding here. When you get the right speaker, again, I've seen Shiraz, which is why I picked him, mm -hmm. uh, work with groups like this. And to me, it really fit one of the things that I feel so strongly about. When you create psychological safety, you create engagement and you allow people to talk about things, even if they're deep and personal around that and that is engaging well the number one we talked about this in a previous um session the number one um factor for uh creating engaged teams is psychological safety the number one the number one the 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 one that uh, underpins all engaged teams is the ability to have psychological safety absolutely yeah okay so here's the last observation i had from this year's conference which was this great point it was too freaking engaging. <laughs> so you already talked a little bit about it, but I had other people, uh, Roger, who came back and told me later and they said, I couldn't put this in the background. I yeah. couldn't, right? Like I'd start listening. It was either so good, like they wanted to engage or that, they, uh, right? You tell me a little bit more, Roger. I think you said well, you had the exact same Let problem. me tell you my story. So I was there for Shiraz and um, the AI component, which I'd like to talk about a little as well. Um, and so um, so we had a really busy week. Um, uh, this last week was the week that we had tons of our um, holiday events pour in for bookings. Um, and we had a whole bunch of gigs, which I'm going to talk about one in a minute. Um, mm -hmm. So I was really busy. And I couldn't make the first day. I made the second day. But what happened is exactly this. I had planned I was going to do a bunch of work off to the side because I have a bunch of work I have to do. So, like, you know, my plan was to be watching, listening, com uh, contributing, but also getting this work done. And then I found I kept going. I'm not getting my work done because I'm too engaged. <laughs> like, it's too hard to turn away. And so then I would do this. I would be like, I've got to get this thing out. Uh, I've got an email to get out in the next 20 minutes. I shut down the um, conference. I literally shut it down. You were so successful. I shut it down, turned <laughs> and did 15 minutes of work and like, you know, done it so quickly and then got back onto the thing to find out what I had missed and then listened for the next hour and a half and then went, oh, I've got another five minutes of stuff to do. It was so like, so honestly, John, you know what it's like when you're in most virtual conferences where none of the focuses on engagement, what happens is that you can do a huge amount of work while you are engaged in the conference because there's no real engagement. There's no, you're not really actively participating. You're mostly doing your work, but you managed um, to make something that was so engaging. You couldn't do stuff um, to the side. You had to either focus or get out, um, which is pretty amazing. So I, I, we had that uh, in another conference too, where somebody said, that finally reminded her that, oh, look, I paid for this conference. I want the value out of this conference. So she did the same thing. She shut it off. It was a different conference, right? Got the stuff out of the way yeah. and then decided when, when she logged on, she was going to focus. She was, she was going to engage back too. engagement is not a one way street. Engagement no. is a two way street that, you know, even if you're attending that, if you give your engagement to the conference, it gives you everything back, which is the experience, the education and what you need. So I like to think of it as engagement is not a spectator sport. Engagement <laughs> is not a spectator sport. You don't sit in the stands watching. You are involved, even if it's just cheering, even if it's like it takes your uh, focus, it takes your energy. Um, 
So uh, on that note, I just want uh, to share this one thing. So yeah. this last week we did three events and th totally three different ones, but I wanted to talk about this one. We we're talking about a little bit of success stories because um, this is what we got back from our name that tune. Um, I can't, Michael, this is, you know, uh, uh, my general manager, my brother. Um, I cannot thank you enough. I'm speechless. This was an absolute pleasure to work with you. The night was a huge success and I was thrilled. Here's the point. I was thrilled to see my colleagues st step out of their comfort zones like never before. Right. So this is something that I believe engagement creates. Always the opportunity for people to participate deeper than they normally do. Now, this was a client who had already had Family Feud earlier this year. Murder Mystery earlier this year. Name that tune was this uh, quote, a uh, comedy magician they booked for Christmas. And we also did Mud Pie Kitchens for them. This Within about a year and a half, we've done five events for this group because they keep coming back because they keep giving us these type of comments saying, this is what engagement does. Yeah. Um, and that's what I saw at your conference as well, um, uh, John. So much, uh, all the people focusing, going, oh my God, I'm absorbing what's going on by participating with my energy. Well, let's talk a little bit about too, the AI too. So you were inspired by the AI portion of the conference to do some things. And I actually want to replay a little section of it uh, here, but Roger, tell me what, what were you inspired to do from the AI segment? Okay. So we talked about AI last time and that twigged me and I was like, okay, I got to spend some more time on AI. And then I didn't. Um, uh, and then I went to your conference and you, I went to the day specifically where you were talking about AI, because I believe there's real value in, in AI, um, yeah. aside from ethics issues, whatever, still for uh, business people and for creative people, there's real value. And, um, so the stuff I have like a page of notes about, uh, AI, um, uh, creating a digital clone. I love that idea. Uh, looking at things by generation, uh, making things shorter, et cetera. All these different things that were popped up in your, and John, in your ses session about AI. So since then, I have not only bought, um, I, I've subscribed to AI the 4.0, like the one you have to buy. Yeah. And yeah. I've spent the last couple of days diving deep into it to figure out how I can be using AI as a small business owner um, to help me uh, get a bunch of stuff done that I don't want to do, or I don't want to spend as much time on, um, as well as all the things that we do well, like I'm good at creating content, but with AI content management, I get to all of a sudden take the things that I've done or the things that we've done, John, mm -hmm. uh, put it through the AI um, brain and come out with, Hey, here are seven videos that are going to get more attention than the ones you had before. Uh, amazing, Roger. Here, let me just share this too. And I, I just got to give a huge shout out to my very good friend, Rick Altman. By the way, his virtual conference, uh, the Presentation Summit, is happening next week, starting Sunday. You can still get a virtual ticket to it. But these are the people who create presentations that look like these. So one of the pieces here is what we call the race to a million. So we, to prove and show and really showcase uh, what's happening or how fast AI grew. This is what we call the race to a million users, okay? Awesome. So Netflix, Netflix took three and a half years, okay? Kickstarter and Airbnb, they both took two and a half years. Twitter took two years. Foursquare, <laughs> here's a bunch of other, right? 13 months, Facebook 10, Dropbox 10, seven, Spotify yeah. five, Instagram two and a half months. Now here's the key. ChatGPT's number is there too, but you can't see it, <laughs> right? <laughs> they did it in five days, yeah. five days to a million users. That's why people like myself and Roger, he says, you got to go and, and figure out what this thing is. Mm -hmm. And, and the, you know, I hope, Roger, that the combination of graphics like these amazing presentations engaging live demos gets back to you and and it, you know this is the the thing i think that's so important when you get great engagement you change your behavior mm. you change your behavior and because that's one of the hardest nobody wants to change roger 
But if you finally get inspired to change, right, uh, then yeah, that's really engagement makes it easy. So I talk about this all the time on stage. I talk about, yeah. you know, we think about change being difficult because it often is. But the moment you change the way you see something, the moment you change the way you think about it, you change the way you act towards it. And if you want real behavior change, work through engagement because it allows you to unlock in locked areas, behaviors that people think are out of reach or are not within their personality or not doable. Um, engagement makes, like, I believe engagement's a superpower. It allows us to do so many things that you couldn't do without it. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. So here's what's on my horizon too. One of the other parts too is that to create real engagement, you gotta keep innovating. Right. Because once you get this level of engagement, now people are going to go, what are you going to do next year? So I just want to share, Roger, right, that next year we're going to go completely hybrid. We're looking for venues right now. We're almost done. And that means that we're going to have not a huge live audience. Probably the max will be 150. Then we'll have a, a virtual audience of up to 500 in Zoom. And then, of course, everyone else and the free tickets will be out in YouTube. And we really look to create something you know, very, very unique next year and getting to figure out who are my best presenters hybrid. So that's where I'm, I'm gonna push the boundaries next year. You know, Roger, what's on your horizons for engagement? Um, uh, For me, for like with AI or just in general? Anything, up to you. What are you gonna, what's oh. good? Roger's wish for 2024. Oh, well, my wish for 2024, like um, we're still coming back from um, a pandemic. And my wish is that, uh, we get busy enough that the performers, um, the amazing people that I bring in to do uh, many of the things that we do when I can't do it myself or, or things that I don't do, I want to have enough work that I can go back to pre-COVID times where I'm like, there is so like we're doing, a, you know, we're doing 15 shows this month. So I'm giving all of these people, these amazing, talented people, lots of work. Um, to me, that one of the hardest things about COVID is that all of these amazing people that I have around me didn't get to do the things that they were put on this earth to do, um, which is to perform, to make people laugh, to make people think. So to me, 2024, mm, I hope that we are so like through the roof busy so that I can say to all of these people, let's make up for the last three years. Outstanding. Roger, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Engagement Show. And we look forward to seeing you next month at this time when we bring you another piece of engagement. Thanks again, Roger. Thanks, John. Bye, everyone. We will see you next time. <laughs>